Hey everyone, in this video we'll be talking about diffusion models. So over the last couple of months, all professional platforms like LinkedIn, social platforms like Instagram, all of them have been flooded by generative AI models, like images produced by generative image model, AI models. And in this video, we'll, we will try to demystify the algorithm, the mathematics involved behind. We're just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna take you through this blog that I found. Uh, this is one of the best, best blogs out there. And uh, I will just skim through the blog, uh, how you can use the blog to understand. Uh, we won't be referencing the research paper itself, but I think this is video is, um, uh, this video and this blog would be enough to make it clear how you're generating so wonderful, such wonderful images from just a few lines of text prompt. So the basic idea behind stable diffusion and diffusion models is that you have an image, you, you start with an image and at every time step T, you try to add some noise, some Gaussian noise to the image. And once you've added this over, let's say, capital T time steps, what you want to create is a parameterized model, a neural network that can learn to denoise the image. So basically once you have done, you are done with this so-called forward, so-called this forward diffusion process, what you want is a neural network that can learn, that is trained on how you can denoise the image. Now, there are, there are a few computational problems that come up on this. The first one being, uh, this process is a Markov process. So basically what you want is if I want to get to the 50th time step, it doesn't matter if I go to the 50th step directly or if I am going gradually like uh, in, sequen in sequential manner from step one to step two to step three and eventually I'm reaching 49 and then 50. So the first thing that they have talked about in this article is what is the diffusion process? And basically they're talking about how you take an image and gradually add Gaussian noise through a series of time steps. And they have mentioned about the process being a Markov chain, Markov chain. And once you're done with that, they have talked about because the process is a Markov chain and we want to make it less computationally costly, what they want to do is they want to re-parameterize the sampling equation that they have so that you can directly reach to the time step that you desire. Once you're done with this, now you want a model, you want a neural network model that can backtrack on this. So you want a reverse diffusion model that can learn how to get you back to the image if you're provided with the noisy image. So how do you train a model? How do you train such a model? Now, if you are someone who, have, who has already done machine learning or artificial intelligence before this, then you might have heard about encoder and decoder models. So you might have heard about auto encoders, variational auto encoders. So the principle is similar to that. So what you do is you have a cost function and the cost function is basically uh, a combination of a P and Q. So P is the function that basically is, is the reverse diffusion and Q, Q is the step function that is basically the forward process. So you have a combination of that and it's very similar to the loss function that you have in variational autoencoder models. And they have provided uh, one, uh, one by one definitional say, insights into the term within the cost function. Now, once you're done with the training algorithm, what they, they have talked about is uh, what is the architecture? So as I already mentioned that it's very similar to uh, variational or autoencoder models. So you're talking about a unit architecture. So within the unit architecture, what you're looking at is you have some input image and you have some output image uh, 
of the same dimensions in case of diffusion models. So there in the official implementation of on the research paper that they have published that there were a lot of other factors also which we are skipping in this video that is resonant blocks, group normalizations and if you want to look at how the, exactly the code worked this is a very good blog by Hugging Face that they have linked so you can check this out too. Uh, now let's come to the burning question what is conditional image generation like till now we saw that okay diffusion models taken images they we we try to induce some noise some Gaussian noise and then what a model is learning is to denoise it but the main question remains where am I adding the text in so whether it's the case of adding some text prompt prompt or whether it's the case of adding some image for reference purposes this comes under the case of conditional image generation also known as guided diffusion so in, in this what we do is that at every step of the Markov chain what we are doing is that we are providing some sort of guidance mathematically guidance refers to conditioning a prior data distribution with a condition so this can be done in two ways classifier based guidance or classifier free guidance so basically you are using image and text embeddings along with all the time steps that you are having in, no, in, in during learning of the denoising of the diffusion model so that your model learns to create images from the noisy inputs which are guided towards a particular output so in the classifier, gu classifier guidance you have one separate model that is a classifier which is trained on whether the output that I'm producing is belonging to a particular class or not but the other one the classifier gu guidance method this has some advantages classifier free guidance method it uses only a single model and it simplifies guidance when conditioning on information that is difficult to predict with a classifier such as text embeddings and it's worthy to note that Imogen, the one by Google, the generative model by Google, highly relies on classifier free methods. Now you might be asking that I have heard the term stable diffusion models. So we have seen about diffusion models, we have already seen that how we can guide them, but now we want to look at what is the meaning of stable diffusion. So if you look at the algorithm and the architecture and the training complexity of these the, these equations that we saw right now they can be very computationally costly so when we need to have a different way an efficient way to scale up these models so basically in stable diffusion what we do is instead of applying the diffusion on a higher dimensional input what we do is we create a smaller latent space and the rest of the architecture remains the same so this was the summary of diffusion, the beautiful diffusion model that is creating so many nice outputs out there that has taken the internet by the storm. So basically you're starting with an image, you're trying to noise it, you're using Gaussian samples. It is using a Markov chain and, that, and using that we have the chance to make it mathematically more efficient because we know that directly reaching to the, the, any particular timestamp is a possibility instead of going gradually in sequence once you have done that we need we talked about the training algorithm what is the cost function that we want to train upon and then we saw the architecture of the neural network that we are talking about so basically we talked about a unit very similar to the variational autoencoder the cost function and then we talked about how you can guide your model towards some text or image reference and then we saw that just to make it computationally efficient we saw about what stable diffusion means and how it uses a smaller latent space to create potentially beautiful images with less computation power. We also referenced the Hugging Face article in which you can find the code for the same and if you want to go into further details I'll advise you to refer to the research paper.